Hey all you physicists, welcome to the next little tidbit of knowledge for the scattering formula. And I have told you guys that in the, in the Compton Effect video that I'll be deriving the scattering formula for you. And just a quick disclaimer before I start, that this lesson is not for the general public. Because this is really this lesson is really heavy on math. So if you, uh, you, get, if you get bored by math really easily and you get confused by equations and formula, then I would advise you that you stop here. But to the others who are interested in how Compton derived the scattering formula you see above, stick on and I'll explain to you. And I'll probably, and I'll probably break this into parts because, you know, it took me like a, a full two pages to write the whole um, derivation down. So hopefully, it, so I can anticipate that this will be a pretty long lesson. Okay, so let's get right into it. So here I've drawn out the diagram and I've given out the scattering formula for you. Just a quick overview. And we know that what the Compton effect is, is um, shooting a photon at a stationary electron. And that's important. So let me write it down here. That it's not moving. It's, it's at rest. At rest. Okay. So the electron before is at rest. And we know that after it happens, they get scattered. And let's say that the wavelength before is lambda. And the wavelength after for the photon is lambda prime. Okay. So... What can we do? We can find out. So since we know that both of the um, both the photon and the electron act as particles, they follow the conservation of mass, and, I mean conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. So let's talk about the conservation of energy first and how it relates to this. So let me write it down. The conservation of energy. Okay. So we know that what is the energy of the um, actually, let me write it in yellow. What is the energy of the photon before? And we know that through the Einstein's um, equation, we know that it's h f. And let's say f, um, um, f is the frequency of the photon before, and f prime is the frequency after. And then we know that the energy of the photon after is represented by h f prime. Okay. How about the electron? Well. Since it's at rest, we can assume that the energy, I mean, not assume, we can we know that the energy of the electron before is basically given by Einstein's energy mass equivalence equation. So it's MEC squared. And I'm sure you guys seen that one before. But next one is quite what Compton said for the electron after is he allowed uh, he allowed for the electron to travel at really high speeds and by high speeds I mean like speeds close to the speed of light so in order to account for this we need to use the relativistic energy momentum relation and this is uh, and this uses Einstein's theory of special relativity and um, this is the equation for it um, momentum of the electron c squared plus M E C squared holding squared. Okay, so I'm not going to go over how this was derived. That I'll save that for another video. Um, but this is just this is the equation. Okay, so we know that um, during the collision, before and after, the energy of I mean the photon lost energy while the electron gained energy because it started moving. So and due to conservation of conservation of energy, we know that the energy gained by the photon I mean lost by the photon has to be equal to the energy gained by the electron. Okay, so we know that the energy gained, I mean the energy lost by the photons must equal to the energy gained by electrons. So, what is the energy lost? Well, the energy lost is basically energy before minus energy after. And what is the energy gained? The energy gained is the energy, energy after minus energy before. Okay. Now let's sub in all the values. We have HF minus HF prime equals to um, this long equation, which we have is momentum C squared plus MEC squared holding squared minus MEC squared. Okay. Now, what I want to do, to do is to isolate this variable, and the reason why I want to do this, it will be apparent later on. So, let's just say for now that I want to isolate the variable. How would I do this? Well, the first step is to bring this this value over to this side, right? So, in doing that, what we have is this. 
hf minus hf prime plus mec squared equals to the square root of pe prime c squared plus mec squared holding squared okay now to isolate this variable to isolate this variable again we need to square both sides and let's do it right away hf minus hf prime plus mec squared holding squared equals to pe prime squared c power 4 because i hate writing brackets so i just so basically what i did was i took out the brackets and squared both variables plus me squared c to power 4. now in now last step to isolate this variable is to bring this value over to that side and we have isolated value this value this value this component so pe prime squared c power 4 equals 2 hf minus hf prime plus mec squared whole thing squared minus me squared c power 4 okay now that we have that let's move on to the conservation of momentum we'll leave this in for now and let's call this equation number one